everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week I thought I'd do something a little bit fun. I've been looking at doing some children's illustration work for my portfolio um, just so that I have a few uh, children's style illustrations uh, that I would like to work with. And since I was really inspired by doing my Animal Crossing themed illustration with Prickles and his flower shop a few weeks ago, I thought it'd be really cute to kind of continue the series and do a a few more illustrations in that style. So after a few doodles in my sketchbook as you can see on the left I decided I wanted to do an owl in an observatory. Now originally the idea that I did have was this sort of like clock tower and to thinking about like maybe the clock tower has like a broken section and so it's using it to um look at the stars and chart the stars and instead I decided to go for this like tower like illustration with this cozy feel like it was a home um and really that was it I was just sort of like have this idea in my head and I really wanted to go with it use lots of warm colors muted tones and really create like a sense of like warmth and um that's what I kind of tried to do with this that it, even though it looks like it's a little cold wearing their little jacket and they've got a cup of tea and there's another one on the side for a visitor who's probably going to come and look at the stars with them I just thought it would be a little bit more fun um it's sort of like a false perspective with these illustrations since it would be a curved room um i didn't quite successfully do uh all the perspective in here but nevertheless i had a lot of fun and i think it came successfully off as a children's illustration and uh, for the full list of equipment that i used i will as always list them in the description down below but I wanted to use this video to really talk about children's illustration and how if you are looking at approaching it in the industry and what you're thinking of it's really good to do a lot of research now I've wanted to do children's illustration for quite some time um, it's been a passion of mine I love children's illustrated books um, they always fascinated me as I was growing up um, I in particular like really loved looking at the illustrations when I was much much younger um, I used to love books like The Far Away Tree by Enid Blyton and I really enjoyed like the Alice in Wonderland series and I used to really enjoy like The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and my favourite part was always looking at the illustrations and how they related to the story I'd look at these illustrations and I would think ah oh, um, how does this tell the story look at this character this is how, this is so very cute and it would always really inspire me as a kid when I was drawing and I always wanted to create my own books and I was inspired by other illustrations that other artists had done um, and I think it's really important to see how the industry changes over time. Now, one thing that I have certainly noticed is that anime and manga style has really influenced the in industry today. It's really become a part of children's illustration. Um, more stylized, more westernized than it has ever been but you can see really see the influences of people that grew up with anime and manga um to how it translates to children's illustration today a really good example of this is flying eye studio books um you can really see a lot of beautiful influences there and also as well like styles of illustration not have only changed but techniques in illustration have changed as well so when i grew up and the books that I read, a lot of the very popular illustrations was either very block colours or very complicated line work with very little colour or if it was colour it would be very muted tones. Um, a good example of very loose line work and a splash of colour would be the Roald Dahl series uh, which is Quinton Blake that illustrates those. Um, it was very it was more simplified and some of the illustrations that were a little bit more complicated they tended to be like more line work based or if they did have color it was very muted tone so that it didn't contrast with the line work and this is from the books that i grew up with and there are quite a few examples that will you know change the algorithm when it comes to that aspect but the thing that i've noticed with children's illustration is that colour seems to be the main factor. Um, one of my favourite children's illustration books that I currently have at the moment is Nightlights by Lorena 
I think her name is. I can never pronounce the surname, so I'm not even going to try. But I really love the use of colour in this. Everything's flowing, it takes direction. And children's illustration has changed over time but to become this more detailed, more influenced sort of thing because they've come it's not just the story when it comes to children's illustration. It is the illustration that really sells the children's book. Um, one of my favourite books as a kid was uh, A Tiger Comes to Tea. And I can't remember the illustrator's name off the top of my head. Um, but I really used to be obsessed with how beautiful and bright the colours were. And I think... It's very interesting to see what influences children's illustration today. So I do say that no matter what industry you are going into, it's really important to do research. I am obsessed with researching because I think it's important to understand like the industry that you are going into and what is currently trending in that um, industry. When it comes to illustration, there are hundreds of thousands of different types of illustration that you can go into, whether or not it's more commercialized or whether or not it tends to be more artistic or more um, fine arty. It tends to be that it's important to look at trends in the industry because that is stuff that is going to work, it's going to sell. And that to some people may seem like it is selling out. It's really important when you're looking into like the industry that you are going into to understand the trends and why they are so popular. Why do they sell? Why does this, that and the other? It's really, really important to do your research. It's the same when it comes to drawing. You have to make sure that you do your research. You have to understand the rules to break the rules. And this is the same with the industry. You have to understand the rules to be able to break the rules. You have to understand what the current trends are to, in order to be able to break those trends and make something usual. I hope that kind of makes a little bit of sense. I mean, when I first started um, doing all the work that I did, I never would have thought I would have ever have been interested in doing children's illustration. I used to want to be a manga illustrator and that was the core that was my job and I kept on coming back to the same thing of how inspired I was by not only the anime and manga style but children's books as well and I think it's become a point where I see myself becoming a children's illustrator and that is something that I really want to work on not only on this channel as well as like working with my original series that I really want to get out there um, I think it's come to the point where I've come to understand my target market um, and that's another important thing when it comes to children's illustration or illustration in general is understanding the target, uh, target market that you are aiming for because if you are, say if you're doing horror art, that necessarily isn't going to be suited for children's illustration, but there is a market for that and it's coming to understand that market and, you know, how you can fit in. I hope that kind of makes sense. There is always a market and an industry for the kind of illustration that you are doing out there, but it's uh, just as it is important to understand, um, you know, perspective and um, it, as important as it is to understand like the rules of anatomy, it's also important to understand the industry that you are aiming for. I think once you understand the target market that you are aiming for and once you come to understand like what kind of illustration you would like to do, I think it becomes, in, it's not that it becomes easier, but you come to understand what kind of work you want to do. And it's it sounds really weird but i knew that i wanted to become a children's illustration uh, illustrator but i didn't realize how passionate i was about it i think by working to our strengths and understanding our weaknesses and working against our weaknesses we can improve ourselves as illustrators my biggest weakness when as an illustrator always has been backgrounds and I've been forcing myself to tackle them more and more because I really, really feel like by tackling my weaknesses, I'm going to get better. And it's the same as um, anything that I do. 
if I tackle my weaknesses, I'm going to get better as an illustrator. And I think now that I understand what I want to do, and well, it's not that I didn't understand it before, it's just, I think I've come to understand my goals and what I want to do. And that for me is very, very important. Um, I really love doing these videos. I've loved doing this channel. It's been such a great way for me to understand my art journey and what I want to do in life. And it's been really good for me. It's it's just something very important to me. This channel has been so important and you guys have been so supportive and so wonderful that it's really, really helped me as an illustrator to come to understand what I want to do. And yes, it may seem like, you know, you've been doing this for nearly four years, how are you only now just understanding this? But everyone's art journeys grow at different rates. Some people don't know what they want to do until a much later date. And I'm really, really, I don't know, I'm happy to finally say, I'm a children's illustrator. And I really want my portfolio to reflect that. So expect to see a few more pieces like this. Would you like more pieces like this? I had this really, really cute idea for a mushroom house that I really wanted to do. Um, but I was trying to think, would I really do that with the mushroom hunters or would I, you know, make another character? I really like this sort of like idea of like um, Animal Crossing-esque inspired illustrations, but they're not quite Animal Crossing. Maybe this is a relative of Blavers. I don't know. I've been playing a lot of New Leaf lately. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you guys, you know, if you are interested in illustration, what kind of illustration do you want to do? Uh, do you want to do comics? Do you want to do um, just standalone illustrations, commercial work? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, be sure to tag me in all your amazing work if you wish to share with me or use the hashtag stay creative with Sephira Lou to share your work on Twitter and on Instagram. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope it's been a little bit informative. Have a lovely day. And as always, folks, stay creative.